Hello. Uh, so this is Freestyle Fairy Kinds, and I'm coming to you today with a lesson on infant must learns. These saved my life when I was just a new mom and my husband's, because we both get stressed out by crying, and so learning these tools before we even had our baby really helped us to be able to make sure that we soothed his um, cries within a minute. Um, so I'm going to teach you two different techniques today about how to calm your soothe or soothe your um, infant. And first of all, I'm going to teach the five S's. Now that was a method created by Dr. Harvey Karp, and I think he's a child psychologist. So he studied this and developed this. This is from something called the happiest baby on the block. So if you can get that from your library or buy it, it doesn't cost that much. You know, you can share it with other moms once you have it or, or dads. I recommend that one. The next one is a video you, you can find on YouTube, and it's called The Hold. I do recommend you're probably going to want to watch that because I have a toddler. I will try to demonstrate it. Uh, and then the third thing that I'm going to talk about later is, is separate, and that's about how to make sure your baby's getting enough, enough nourishment. So, <clears throat> Elisha, Mommy's going to demonstrate the five S's, all right? So first of all, um, we want to mimic what our baby um, was experiencing when they're in the womb to try to calm them down. So what we're going to do is we're going to swaddle them. So in the womb, they're very tight. Can you hold still? We're going to play, Elisha's your baby. Elisha's your baby. And then so we're going to tighten, tighten that and we're going to tuck it underneath his, his body. Next, we're going to fold up the underside. It's really a lot easier if you have square blankets. Not done yet. No, no, Elisha's a baby. Elisha keeps his hand still. Oh, Elisha's a baby. All right, and we're going to fold that up straight. We're going to have this triangle here. Let's let it go so Mommy can grab it. And now we're going to wrap it all the way around. <laughs> Elisha's a baby. And we're going to lift the baby up. Pulling it back through. <laughs> your baby. And we're going to tuck it here up at the top. So that's swaddling. <laughs> I'll demonstrate it again with... Okay, he's crying. They probably will start to cry at the beginning. But what you want to do is you want to get them on her side. And you're going to start... Shh, you're going to sway and swing. And then... <laughs> little babies, they like it better. And then you're going to... Shh, and then you also can provide them with something to suck. So I had to do it fast because he what he's a little bigger. He knows how to move, so he doesn't want to stay still. So we we swaddle the baby. We get them on their side or on their stomach. Side is usually the more uh, that one is more predictable that they're going to calm down with this side. Then you saw how when I started going shh, shh, really big in his ears, he calmed down. And that's because when the babies are in the womb, they hear everything magnified through the water. And it's sort of that shushing sound that they're surrounded by all the time. And so... You want the baby... The wrap? All right. So, uh, then the, and then the last thing is the suck. So, if you can swaddle them and breastfeed them, that's good. Or if you just want to give them a pass, pacifier or their sippy, or sorry, their, uh, their bottle, those are good options as well. But if you're trying to get your baby to go down to sleep, um, the pacifier will be that option that you want to go for. With my baby, he never used uh, any pacifier, and I just breastfed him whenever I needed. So, you don't also always need a pacifier, and just pay attention to what your baby's signals are to figure out that for yourself. So, Elisha, do you want to practice? Uh, we can practice swaddling. You want to swaddle the baby? Baby Mickey? So I'm going to demonstrate again with a less mobile 
a little baby. <laughs> Do you want to learn how to, to swaddle the baby? Yeah? So, I tried to make this a uh, square shape to start out with. The square blankets are really the, the easiest ones to use. So you want to have the top of the blanket a little bit at the top of their head. And then you're going to wrap around underneath of their arm and use the under of their arm to hold the blanket down. All right. Next, we're going to, we can fold it a couple times if we want to, but we're going to bring this straight up. Now, we will take this corner and wrap all the way around, hopefully. And then, hopefully what you can, this blanket is still a little too small. The bigger blankets are easy, but you're supposed to be able to cuddle, sorry, to put that into there. You want to hold the baby Mickey? So, it's also good to be able to teach your kids how to swaddle the baby so that they know, oh, this is how I comfort my little brother or my little sister. So practicing teaching the baby to swaddle while you learn how to swaddle is, or your, your toddler or your older kids is a really good idea. So next, I'm going to teach you the hold. I'm going to show with Mickey. Can mommy have Mickey? Mommy needs Mickey, and then I'm going to show them with you, okay? All right, so you have your baby. Your baby's crying, and you're, you really want your baby to calm down, but they're awake. They're alert. You're not trying to put your baby to sleep. So what you're going to try to do is you have your hand here, and you put your, your palm on their chest. You scoop your hands underneath of their arms. And then you're going to uh, shift to adjust so that you're holding underneath their bottom. And this makes it so that they can look around. And they can be a little bit more engaged with their environment. They can look at you or the other people in the room. And usually this really does work in a few seconds to get alert but fussy baby to calm down. It creates an interest for them that, that you know... Looking up at the ceiling all day could be getting a little boring. So do, doing this and changing the pace this way. And so basically you're, you actually sort of have your, uh, sorry I did that wrong. It's not under the arm with the thumb, it's underneath the chin. And that is because you're helping to hold their chin up so their head doesn't collapse onto their chest. Alright? So also <laughs> another benefit, I'm going to show you my mommy skills because... <laughs> If you do this, like, all the way up and, and, and calming them, you can do it with a kid that, that that's big, and you're going to get bigger, stronger muscles. So, do you, do you want to play with mommy? Mommy's going to lift you up. It's exercise time, okay? Right. Mommy hold you, all right? Mommy going to hold you like a baby. You're mommy's baby. Calm down. Calm down, mommy's baby. All right, so you're gonna sit the baby up, grab onto their chest, and hold underneath their butt. And then you're gonna just sort of sway. <laughs> and with, with a, a younger baby, your hand would be right here. But I'm not gonna do that because he's too big. <sighs> but yeah, so this I'm is leaving. awesome. You're swinging. <laughs> You're thinking. All right. Wink. Oh, mommy's arms need a break. You want to dance? All right. So, the last thing that I want to teach you is about the tongue tie. Now, with Elisha, he had a tongue tie and he could tell within the first day. I'd heard of other moms uh, who didn't know for like four or five months and their baby were not meeting the necessary physical development to to be like healthy and stuff they needed to have more nourishment and the tongue tie or the lip tie was interfering with that and so with elisha even though we got it on the first day he was still having sorry get it clipped on the first day he was still having trouble getting 
enough nourishment. So first thing, make sure that your doctor, your OBGYN, your midwife checks to make sure that they have or don't have a tongue tie. I will show you where it is. That on me is the tongue tie. And with my son, it was all the way to about there on his tongue. So he had a very um, held down tongue. I'm sorry. Elisha, please don't do that too. Sorry. Sorry, go to Fox Box. Elisha, come here. We don't sit on the doggy. We especially don't sit on the doggy in the food chair because that could hurt the doggy. Okay. So back to the tongue tie. So the other place where it can be is the connection between the thumbs and the lip. You can't even really see mine there. It's hard to show the upper one. But so any three of those areas that might be held down too hard needs to be have a surgery in order for the baby to be able to get enough nourishment. And I do not understand why the doctors don't automatically check. So you need to be proactive about your checking with your baby's pediatrician or your doctor if you're still at the hospital. Or uh, like with me at a home birth, my home birth midwife came the next day and she did it as part of my very first day after the baby is born checkup. So there are different options for having your baby to have this minor surgery. And then to follow up, you just rub, massage. You, you give your, your child some healthy massage three times a day for five minutes at a time to whoo, make sure that um, that tongue tie doesn't come back and, and seal back together since the tongue is one of the fastest healing organs in our body. And then uh, you also want to make sure afterwards to do some follow-up with a chiropractor. We didn't do a chiropractor follow-up for a whole month, and Elisha wasn't really gaining weight, and he was um, spitting up a lot. Or, sorry, no, he wasn't spitting up very much at all. We went to the chiropractor, and on that very day, it went from terrible pain of, of nursing him to no pain at all. And then um, he started gaining two pounds a week after that. Elisha, Mommy will get you bites once the movie is done. Thank you for playing the game with me, but I I don't want to get hurt, okay? Uh, two, two pounds a week. That was amazing. And he also started spitting up a lot more, which showed me that his stomach had was very small still, and so he was getting a lot more milk, and it wasn't holding as much milk. So that was awesome. So make sure you have your, to check if they have a tongue tie, uh, and then follow up afterwards with the chiropractor and the baby, um, infant massage which is online so I hope that these were beneficial to you all especially you new moms out there I'm gonna share this with a few of you who I know just recently had your babies um, so congratulations and I hope that um, you don't have a baby with a tongue tie and everything goes well with your child and um, you, you learn those five S's and that hold and your baby's gonna be so happy <laughs> so